Good morning, everybody. It is December the 13th. Good thing it's not a Friday, right? Anyway, it's December the 13th. It's a Monday. It's 2021, and we're here at Always in Stitches, and you're meeting me at the sewing machine, but we're not going to do anything with the sewing machine today. I'm going to show you some pictures I took when I was at Moda, Moda Fabrics in uh, Dallas, Texas, and then I'm going to show you a little trick I learned while I was there, okay? And it has to do with pressing. So, Here's the warehouse. Oh, I've never seen the warehouse. Isn't it beautiful? Yes. Mr. Uh, Moda, Mark Dunn, is Mr. Moda. He's the man who owns Moda. He went to Paris, and he bought a cement dollhouse, and he came home and replicated the dollhouse into this warehouse, and he's won lots and lots of awards for the architecture of this, uh, of this building. So... If you look right here, let's see, let's go to this one first. Let's go to this one first. Okay, I'm looking at it upside down. All right. The bottom floor, all this right here is marketing. That's where I work and that's where my friend Tammy works. All this up here is design, where all the fabric's being designed and the decisions are being made, which SKUs get printed and which SKUs don't, because the artists will um, send in, you know, maybe multiple of designs, and they'll narrow it down so that there's only 42 SKUs. And they may use, like, five prints, five SKUs, actually, and print them in different colors five designs and print them. So all that decision making and all that stuff, the photography, all that goes on upstairs. If you look right here behind this tree is a window. It mirrors this side right here, okay? So this juts out and this comes over and there's a um, set of windows just like this over here behind this little tree. That's where the sewing room is. So that tree is right here. Okay, so this also is the sewing room because the sewing room is a corner room. And then this is my friend Tammy's office here and then other offices down and through there. This is These two windows is where the big production uh, goes on in the warehouse where uh, they put together the salesman samples, the things he goes around with and shows shops how to sell I mean, what the new fabrics are, those are all made right in there. So it, it's a pretty exciting place uh, to be. When I was there, somebody drove up in their fancy schmancy uh, decked out uh, Jeep and was taking their pictures in front of the uh, building. Tammy says at prom time, a lot of that goes on at prom time. So this is one of the things I made while I was there. While I was there, I was putting together the sewing room. Let's find those pictures. Oh, this is where we went to eat, blah, 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 blah. Let me look. Let me find them myself before we... Oh, we can be here all day. Oh, here we go. Okay, here's, here's the sewing room. Okay, when I got there, this is what the sewing room looked like. Okay, everything was up against the wall. Okay, let's go this way. Let's X out of that. Everything was up against the wall. See, there's those windows I was telling you about. The sewing machines were up against the wall. The rulers were up against the wall. Oh, that's just something I found. So this is how uh, then I started redoing it. I put the rulers in this little triangular shape. I found a little uh, cubby uh, shelving thing. And then I put the sewing machines in the middle of the room, kind of in an L shape. I'm taking pictures of the empty walls. Where my cutting station's here, my pressing station's here, and my sew machine's there, and then there's a sew machine on the other side. So you, Tammy and I could sit together and face each other while we were sewing. So there you can kind of see a bigger view. And so there's that side window, and here's the front window. Isn't that nice? Okay, then this, let's get back to the warehouse where I was making things. 
you know, we had to party in between a little bit. How come it won't go? Okay, here we go. Back to the advent calendar. So this was a little advent calendar that I made for a photo op. They were doing some publicity on it. And each one of these little numbers is a pocket. And I had to cut them out separately and get them all to the same size and fold them under so that they wouldn't have any raw edges and top stitch along the top and then sew them down on three sides to the actual background. So uh, that's one thing I learned. Then I made these three little stockings. They're probably about, oh, I'd say six inches by about maybe three inches. They're little, but these are big. So, and then I made this apron. So all that in, in just that uh, little bit of time that I was there. So I wanted to show you that because somebody had asked and I thought that was kind of fun that they would ask. But this is a panel that I got while I was there and it's a ginger bar and it's not going to be out until next year. Okay, but it's an advent calendar similar to the one I made when I was at Moda. And this is what I discovered was this little pressing, per, press perfect. It's called press perfect. It's two and a half by 10 inches. And what it is, I'm gonna open it up. Anytime you wanna turn fabric under and press a sharp seam, into the fabric before you sew it. This is heat resistant. It's really thin, kind of feels like felt, but of course it's not. It's some kind of a magic, I don't know, witchcraft, I think. It's just really thin, but I love all the markings it has on it. And it's heat resistant. So. What I'm going to do is, this is this is the uh, squares here that get cut out. And then they get sewn on to these squares here. So that's the back of your squares. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my little square here. Just change the blade in my uh, rotary cutter so it's nice and Yummy and ready to go. It says to cut them out on the saw on the dotted lines. On the saw line. On the dotted lines. I like saw line better. No dotted lines. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna start calling it the saw line. I love it. So I would go through and I cut them all out on the dotted line. See that? Get them all cut out. Now, I wouldn't just take them and sew them. It says to fold these under like that, right on the line. Well, to make sure I stay straight, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to lay this. Can you see this? Let me get in there. Let me get in there. Yeah, get in here. Get in there. I'm going to lay that. Now, let's say that if I was doing the hem of a garment, oh. And I wanted it to be an inch and a half, mm -hmm. That's that hem. Mm -hmm. You know, I could bring this fabric all the way up nice. to an inch, and then I would be guaranteed that I'd have a nice straight uh, pressing seam, or not seam, but pressing, what do you want to call that? I don't know, but I'm thinking. Fold, a pressed fold. I'm thinking hopefully when I open up my stocking at home that this is in there because yeah. this is the coolest thing. This is pretty neat. Yeah. So then what you do is see, this is heat resistant. So you just keep that on there. That's Whoa. perfectly straight. Instead of me trying to keep it straight here. Right. And seeing that I want to keep it right on that line and trying to do that with my fingers. Could you see where I could get me some burnt fingers? Oh, yeah. So I'm gonna I think my fingers just got burnt watching you. Turn this around. Make sure it's straight. And the reason I can make sure it's straight is because of all these lines. lines. Well, 
Well, let's sit there for a few minutes. How do they ever come up with this stuff? I don't know. Then what I did was I went ahead and I just folded that, kept that folded under, and I pressed it again on the top side. And I knew that they were going to stay straight. And also what I could do is get that down, come over here, I'm going to do the other side. Now what I could do so I could get me a little spray starch. I could spray me some starch on there. Fold that over. And that starch is gonna help me even more. Hit it with the starch. Hit it with the starch. I hope you're gonna tell us about who's on your sweater later. This is Miss Chloe. She's my baby girl. She's on the holiday sweater. I think one of the best days in the filming um, uh -huh. that I've had in filming is when you actually brought her to work. Oh, I love that. That was a great day. She always wants to come to work with me all the time. Now look at how much crisper and cleaner that was with the you spray starch. Oh, that does I mean, that is, that is starched down, isn't it? Now I know why people use starch. Yeah. So I'm going to do the other side. But what makes it nice is having this under me, if I spray that with starch, uh -huh. it doesn't spray the whole thing and make the other things. Because if the other seams, the other pieces that I pulled it down get wet, yeah. they're going to come undone. Oh. So now, I'm just going to take that. I'm going to have to do it with my finger. I thought I could slip my iron under there, but uh, I've got it too wet. Hold it down. Okay, move your I fingers. You. <laughs> I got him. I didn't even know this thing existed. Yeah. Well, I didn't either until I was at Moda. I can make little cloth tea bags. And with this, this little was... fully pressy deal. Now what I would do is see... I would take it to the sewing machine. My sewing machine right now is uh, needing some doctor's assistance. But what I would do is I'd take this and I'd top stitch this down. I'd top stitch right along there, making sure that those were tucked under. And then when I attached it, but see, I can mess around with it and it doesn't come unfolded. it on number one and top stitch that down. I don't know if I would do it right on top or if I bring it down a little bit so a little bit of that fabric would show. Isn't that cute? That's the behind cute. it. That's cute. So then it's going to be a little pocket and then I could just top stitch that on right onto the background and because I top stitched that down, got a little, got me a little pocket. But this all stays really nice and crisply folded. While you're trying to, instead of trying to work with pins and have the pins in the way and try to pin them onto here, and I mean it would just be nothing but just pin, pin, pin. And you know how I love to pin. But look at how much easier that just sits in place. Mm. Look, let me take it off. Put it to the back side. See, look, that just stays folded. Look at how much we've been messing with Let me it. see that. That starch is awesome. And I mean, you can mess around and mess around and mess around, and it just stays perfectly great. Now, like, let's say, for instance, I wanted to uh, hem. Let me cut this make the hem of a little girl's dress. My, what big ruler you have. Yeah, this is my jumbo ruler. It's a 24 and a half by 12 and a half. It's new. Dawn doesn't mess around. No, no. Rotary cutter, rotary. Oh, look, look what I found today. Ooh. As I was getting my new blade That's out. That's a big boy. As I was getting my new blade out, I looked at these. I'm thinking Santa might be bringing me this. 
$50.99. That's a hefty price, but you know what? It's a lifetime. You don't have to buy it once. You only have to buy it once. And this Christmas, I've been making a lot of stockings and stuff where I have to go through a lot of layers, a lot of batting, a lot of layers. And I tell you, this would have come in handy. So I'm putting that on my Christmas list. Dawn, I bet you've been nice. I've been nice. I've been, well, I've tried my best. I can say that. You did make us all those stockings. I did. Yeah, I knitted those. I stayed at home one night and knitted all those stockings. Well, me, you hang them up. Me and Hobby Lobby. You put some nice Scrabble letters on them. <laughs> okay, so say this was the hem of a little doll dress. I'm going to have to get back over here to my... So, to my uh... Can it be the hem on a horse blanket? On a horse doll blanket? Oh, yeah, a okay. horse blanket. All right. Okay. I could I could see myself sewing the, one of those. And see, here's a good quarter inch line. And so I would just lay that down, Dang. and look at how I can position that. Wow. All the way down. You got that mad quarter inch right on the nose. See that? And well, I'm pulling it and pushing it back so that it, it lands right on that quarter inch. Okay, there's that. I'm gonna come over here and get my spray starch. Give me a little spray starch there. Come on. Oh, the sweet sound of the starch being pressed in from the heat of the iron. And I'm just gonna press that down and I can see that it's right on the quarter inch. Right on the quarter inch. I'm gonna let it sit there for a minute. And now, wow, it's crisp. a perfect quarter inch. And now if I wanted to just top stitch that down an eighth of an inch on a little doll's dress, wouldn't that just be so adorable? Now, if I wanted to fold it in again, I wouldn't need to use my thing because I already have a quarter of an inch. I could just move it in another quarter of an inch. But that's an easy guide. I wonder where I can get one of those. Always in Stitches has them. You know that quilt store in Noblesville, Indiana. Have you ever been there, Peter? Every every day that's not Wednesday or Sunday. <laughs> now look how crisp and nice that is. Wow. Well, I know what I'm doing some shopping when yeah. I get done here. Yeah, this is a nice aid. This is a real nice thing to have in your arsenal. If you do, now the other day, you remember those uh, uh, drawstring bags yes, I was showing yes, you the yes, other yes. day? Well, you know what they were doing? They were making casings. Uh-huh. And so what they were doing was, so they would come along here. Let's just say, for instance. Let's go like this. A little bit more. I have to get me a new panel if I really want one of these. Don't ever do that. Don't cut toward yourself. So then uh, they go to the other side. Bring it in a quarter of an inch. Quarter of an inch. Get me some spray. You know, that's a perfect quarter inch right there. I'm going to go in again. Okay. 
Now look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And then let's pretend, you know, that I had my bag here. This was my bag. Well, let's use the one without the... Let's just pretend that this was my bag that I was going to scrunch up like this. You know, this was turned under, and I was going to scrunch it up, and I needed a casing. Well, what they did was they took this, and they, well, I have to fold this under. Where'd my little piece go? Okay, right here. In the scrap bin. Yeah. Looks like fabric. I'm going to fold <laughs> this under. Now, see, I've got it on the wrong end. i got to get the end with the quarter inch. Is spray that awesome. I didn't let the iron sit on. I'm gonna. But I know now it's a perfect quarter of an inch. If I wanted to turn it in again, I could, but that's going to be awfully bulky for a casing. I'm going to lay this down. What's a casing? A casing is where you are going to feed through either elastic or a ribbon or something, and it encases the ribbon or the product that you're putting it putting through it. So that's a casing. Okay. Okay. I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to give it a press real quick, making sure that little tail is in. Oh, this is so cute. I wish I'd left my uh, my bags here, but uh, so let's say this is the top of my bag, and I needed to feed my ribbon through something to gather it up, right? Mm -hmm. Remember that? Uh -huh. And I just put, I left the lining and the fabric, I just gathered it between the line and then the fabric. But if you wanted to add a little bit of pizzazz or something even more fun, is see, this is already folded in, uh -huh. folded in, so that's a nice finished edge. You just top stitch that on, top stitch that on, then feed your ribbon through, do it on the other side, and you'd have your casing. That's cool. Isn't that neat? Yeah. Yeah. So there's a hundred things you can do with this, but Look, mostly... my shirt has a casing. Right, right. In, in your pocket. pocket. In her pocket. For, so a, for a pen. Put a pen or something in it. Yeah. yeah. So I bet this, you know, on the back of your, on the bottom of your jacket, where I, mine's not him because mine's knitted, but yeah. you understand what I mean. Uh -huh. It's to actually gauge to measure and then have a heat resistant surface and it's so thin that it gives you that nice crisp fold. I I, I mean you're gonna find if you just quilt, if you just piece, you're not gonna have a use for this product probably. Well on the but bottom if, of pockets but I'm saying my pockets you have to turn these under right. to sew them on a shirt. Oh a pocket perfect. It's and be my perfect pocket, for a pocket. Every time I sew a pocket on right. there's always that little Yeah not, that sticks where it's not out. straight. Right, right, where it sticks out. Uh huh. Well what I'm saying is though, back to what I was saying yeah. is if you just piece, you're not gonna need this. But if you do crafts, if you do garments, if you do anything where you need to fold something over and you need a really sharp pressed edge before you top stitch it down, that it will hold it in place and you know it's perfectly square, this is a tool that you need. So let's get the, uh, the thing back out so you can kind of see. 
Oh, and it's got, it gives. It's got instructions. Yeah, I think they're in lots of languages. But Pictures, see, yeah, diagrams. here, here, see, and lots of good oh, uses. Oh, you can use it as a ruler and mark. Well, yeah, it's got ruler markings right on it. Let's say you wanted. Let's say, for instance, where's my little uh, thing again? Let's say, for instance, I wanted it to be perfectly two inches. You can miter corners. I can miter corners with it. But if I wanted it to be exactly two inches, this is two inches wide. I could bring that in like that, and I would know it would be when I pressed it, it would be exactly two inches. If I needed it to be bigger than two inches, I take it here. This one is actually two and an eighth inches. So I look at the two and an eighth on this fold, and I know that's two and an eighth there. And see, that's how I can measure. So these measurements are really important to have. And yes, Peter, there is mitered corners on here also. So say. what a nice tool to have in your uh, toolbox, your sewing box. Stuff my stocking. Yep. So there it is. I wanted you to know about it. And it really comes in handy when making pockets. See, that's exactly what this is, is a pocket. Whether it's a pocket on your shirt, or a pocket in, on the back of your jeans, or a pocket on Miss Chloe's, uh, Miss Chloe's little thing here where her collar is, hooked to her collar so she can carry little snacks. Or a random pocket on the in back of pocket. a shirt in the middle, like that so, sweater you I have. I have a sweater <laughs> like that. Yeah, any place you want to put a pocket. See, you have to turn those edges under and you have to make sure they're square. I, you know what I just thought of? What? I think this is perfect for all the lavender that I'm gonna that's gonna blossom this year. You're gonna for, make that lavender for bags? sashes. Yes. Oh yeah. Now that I know how to make the bags. Yeah. And I have the tool to make the pockets. Oh yeah. And I love lavender. Yeah. And, and if I can't you wanted ever get to make a pretty them, casing, like say keep for the moths instance, on my wall. Let's say for instance you wanted to use those mesh bags uh -huh. and you didn't want the casing to show through. You could put this on top of the mesh bag oh, cool. for a pretty decorative yes. casing. And so then your ribbon, you wouldn't actually see the ribbon through those little mesh bags. That's so, fancy. Okay, all kinds of ideas, all kinds of fun things. They do make them with curved edges too, so like for shoulders and things. Um, I don't have one like that. I just noticed it on the website that they had one like that. And I don't even think that we have one in stock. So, but I just, I fell in love with this. And of course, I'm going to do it to all these little pockets. So I can make myself an advent calendar for the store for next year. Just do all of them just exactly like that. So I'm getting ready for next year's Christmas already. What do you think about that? That's just craziness, don't you think? It's December the 13th. The month is half over. So I hope that your tree is trimmed if you're into that. I hope that your family is gathering if you're into that. Um, I hope that you're just ce celebrating the season, uh, winter, whatever it is you want to celebrate. It's time to celebrate life. So let's get busy doing that. I'm home cross-stitching and quilting and making things and just having a really fun time in my sewing room, and I hope you are too. So until the next time I see you and the next time we meet at the sew machine, have fun. Bye.